Welcome everybody. Today's video finds us over here in Bagan, and I know I'm going to mispronounce it, but we're at the Hiti Lo Min Lo Temple. I'm not sure exactly how you say it. Hiti Lo Min no Lo. Anyway, I'll put it up on the screen so you can see what it looks like. And uh, anyway, this is a three-story tall temple, as you can see right there, and it's known for its uh, brilliant little stucco work. And this was built around like 1211 to 1231 or so. And it's 46 meters tall, I think is how tall it is. And uh, anyway, it has some uh, Buddha images and uh, the stucco work and it's made out of red brick. So we're gonna go take a look around at it and see what we see. Right out here outside of the temple wall and you can see it has got a massive stupa that goes up to the top there and it has that I think it's called the Ziti it's HTI that's that little gold umbrella at the very top but it's quite cool the styling is so much different than what I've been seeing in Thailand all of these years so uh, anyway we'll go in they have like the little shops and stuff over here you can take the uh, little horse and buggy or the tuk-tuk around to go from temple to temple, however you want to do it. So anyway, let's go in here and we'll see the, uh, the temple now. This is the gate to get in. It has the little chetties and stuff up there. And then the outer gate. Then they just have like an open area here with like the shade trees. And then you can see the temple. How cool is it? It is uh, massive. It's not the tallest here but the detail work seems to be the best that I've seen so far here in Bagan. It was built by King Hitilimeno, that's the name. Now they also know him as Nanduangoma. I don't know if that's easier to say or more difficult. Look at this. Then they have the bell over here. And then you can see the stucco work has like the little images out here. So this is 800 years, 810 years old or so. And it, I guess it was damaged in the earthquake in 1975, like a lot of these temples were, but it's been restored. So let's go inside here. Oh, this is quite nice. So it looks like they have uh, some of the murals in the plaster here. And then you can see how the red brick, and there's a bird nest hanging on the wire. They've added electricity in here. So we have like an elephant down here. You have the Burmese writing. There's some more of the Burmese script. And then check out this Buddha. So it has like the Sima stone behind him which is in the shape of like the, the Bodai tree leaf. Yeah, this is a nice little building here. So you can buy the flowers here, make a donation to the temple, and then you go and you leave them there and make your, make the merit. Yeah, I really like how they built this. And it's the same shape, the roof is the same shape as that little sema behind them. And it has a nice breeze right here where I'm standing. It feels so good. It is so hot, I'm just like drenched in sweat. So this breeze feels fantastic. So we'll walk through the little caverns here. And you can see how thick that plaster is. That plaster is about one inch thick. And then it has the red bricks behind it. And they have all the mural paintings. So there's supposed to be four Buddha images. That's the side of that big one we were just looking at. And then you can see here the archway with the murals. And then they have some small little nooks, but check this pattern work out here. And here's some of the people chanting. You can see they painted the roof up there also, the ceiling. 
Yeah, that's really cool. So here will be the second Buddha. There's four in the four cardinal directions in here. You can see the little room that this is in. And the same, it has like a little chetty above the Buddha's head. Now it has two little antechambers here, but there's no Buddha image in there. So here comes our chanters. So they're all going around the inside here chanting. So you can see the Buddha has the little gemstone in his head and he got the eyes looking down. Yeah, this is a nice thing. It's got the little umbrellas. You can see some more of the murals here. And a couple more of the little notches for the Buddha images. Yeah, this is kind of a cool little temple. I would say it's probably built like in a crucifix pattern, just kind of uh, walking around in here. Oh, this is nice. Have some murals on this wall also. So I don't know if these have been touched up. I would assume so. I don't think they're 800 years old where people can touch them. You can see how faded off they are though. This little room is set up the same as that last one. Oh, so that's a humongous painting or the mural of the Buddha right there. So you can see his head and part of his body down here. These are like his legs. And then here is this image. This is the third one. And then another mural over there of a Buddha. And then a small little chamber. And I'm not sure what that says. So what those chanters will do is they'll go around in here three different times. They'll make three loops around the inside while they're doing that little chant. You can see the base of this on the corner. Now getting around Bagan here, you can uh, hire out the little tuk-tuks, ride around in it. You can get in the song tao. They have the horse and buggy also, which that's kind of a slow way to go, but you can do it. All right, so here is this chamber. So you can see how they did the brickwork, which is quite cool. They put it into kind of an arch over that. And then they have a little shrine here. Yeah, this is a nice Buddha image also. So the locals come, they park right over here and then they walk down this little walkway and then they come in and this is what they're greeted with. So they walk right into this little entrance. You can see the styling. Those look like dragons up there. I don't think they're Naga. And these, these actually here, this one looks pretty new. Same, this plaster work on this wall is really, really recent but it's still nice enough to see. So they come right in here, and before they come, they can ring the little bell. And then come in here, and this is what you see. So this is the fourth Buddha. So it has four Buddhas around the inside of this temple. And then here's the shrine for people to make all their donations and everything. All right, let's walk around. We'll walk out where we started and we'll look around the outside a little bit more. More of the murals. It's a little dark here, but it's, uh, you can just make them out. So they're only using natural lighting in here. So the natural breeze and the natural lighting is all you get on the inside of this temple. So right here, they actually have some steps that you can go up. 
kind of cool, but it's got a gate here and it's locked up. I would like to go up there, it'd be, I think, a fantastic view. All right, so we're back over here to the side of this big Buddha where we first came in. Let's go outside and look at the outside of it a little bit more. So there's uh, all those little entryways. They're all not used, only uh, looks like two of the entrances are used. And the styling. And I don't know if they had any figures right here, you see, or these were just like little stone tablets maybe. I don't know what was there. And then they, it's kind of cool, they put this here as a, as a corner, and that was also on the inside corners. You can hear some people back there ringing the bells. You can see, yeah, this was a stone, stone tablet of something that was on it. And then you can see all of this. This is all the old, old plaster work that they've done. And that there's the renovation. Yeah, whenever this was new, this would have all been probably uh, whitewashed white, and it would have been unbelievable. Yeah, it's hard to believe how much these guys were working back in the day in Bagan. This was the kingdom, the capital of the kingdom here for uh, like 400 years, the ninth century up to the, like the 13th century. And there was a couple of reasons why this kingdom collapsed. They were under threat from the Mongols. The Mongols were trying to uh, take over Southern China and they sent a force down here to block the retreat route of the kingdom in southern China that they were trying to, uh, to conquer. And the uh, king of Bagan sent his army with his war elephants out to fight the, the Mongols. And the Mongols were, of course, intimidated by those huge war elephants. But in their war fashion, they used the mobility and they just outran the war elephants and shot arrows at them until either the war elephants died or fled. And then the, uh, the Mongols were able to defeat the, the army. But that was one of the factors. The main factor was they just, uh, the people didn't have any economic opportunity. Over the centuries, people donated land to all these temples. And so the temples became the only landowners here. They owned everything. So people didn't have any way to uh, to make a living. And so there was just no economic opportunity, so they collapsed. You know, whenever the temple owns all the farmland, you know, what are the people going to do? But, you know, when people would die, they would donate the land to the, to the temples. I think the economic was the main driver of the decline. That's what I've read in... Uh, heard about in podcasts and stuff like that. Kind of an interesting era. I really like the, uh, the Bagan history. You can see the Burmese style dress. The men wear those little serapis and the women also. She's holding the flowers and they put that white powder on their face. That's uh, like a natural beauty product that they use. There's a piece of wood that they, they grind down on a stone and they mix it with water and then they put that on their face and they make little designs and stuff. And everybody's out here posing for pictures. And you can just see how tall it is, 149 feet or 49 meters or so. And then it has all the smaller little chetties all around with those little gold umbrellas. And then it's kind of cool, they have this faux front that you see right here. This is kind of similar to what you would see in like a Khmer temple. It's not related at all, but they would do those faux fronts with, uh, with the stones. They had those lintels also that went over the doors, but they don't do that in these temples here. These have more of uh, you know, an Indian influence to them. And then they have the little bell here. So they'll come up and they'll ring that three times and then they'll hit it once on the ground. And then they have kind of a, maybe they had at one point like a lion sitting right here, but now it's just the stones. But they, these look like they've been recently remodeled. One last look at this temple. Yeah, this one is fantastic. The condition of this is one of the best that you'll see here in Bagan. I think the renovations after the earthquake in 1975 made it to where they could really fix it up. And they've done a nice job up there. That's still, to me, it looks like the Mahabodhi temple from India. 
but only much shorter and a different, little different design, but that's quite cool. This is kind of what you see when you're coming the entrance over on the other side. A couple old pagodas here, and then uh, some of the vendors selling some of the snacks and stuff like that. And uh, look at this massive, massive temple. So they're saying on the data plate here that Hitimunlo had three different names, and I'm not gonna try, I can't even get one name right, let alone three of them. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go in. Yeah, I forgot about the little story here. It was on that uh, data plate that the king, King Hitalamo, was chosen as king. And what, what happened was the king that was uh, before him had him and his brothers, his four brothers, sit in a circle. And they put a white umbrella between them. And then whenever the white umbrella tilted towards one of the sons, that was who was king. And that's where uh, the umbrella pointed was to him and that's how he became king. So that's gonna finish up our little video over here at this Hitilimeno temple. This is really, really nice. It's an 800 year old temple and it's uh, some really cool architecture. If you like the old temples, stuff like that, this is definitely something you wanna see. And if, you, if you're a fan of, of that kind of things, Bagan is definitely a should be on the top of your list. It's kind of really relatively off the radar of most tourists, but it's a shame because uh, this is fantastic. There's so many different temples, so many different things to see and do here. It's, uh, it's been a dream of mine to come over here and see this for a while and I'm happy I've seen it. So anyway, if, uh, if you liked the video, make sure you smash like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. This is what I do. I show you things that I see and tell you a little bit about what I know. So if you like that kind of thing, then you found the right place. And leave me a comment. If you've been here, tell me what you think. If uh, you were impressed as I was, let me know in a comment down below. And if, uh, if you want to come and have any questions, ask me and I'll do my best to tell you that. Also, tell you the little bit of information I do know. And uh, anyway, smash the like, subscribe, share, and leave me a comment. And until next time, remember, life is a journey. Enjoy. Enjoy.